Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you could use Luminar Flex to go from this to this. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Luminar Flex as a Photoshop plugin. And I'm also going to answer a couple questions that I've received. Uh, one question I'm going to answer right away is a couple different people ask me, is Luminar Flex only a plugin? No, it works as a standalone product as well, but Skylum Software is marketing it more as a plugin because it's optimized to be used as a plugin in Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, um, Lightroom, Mac Photos, and I probably forgot one or two. But anyway, it's optimized to work as a plugin, although it does work fine as a standalone product. Now, in this video, we're going to be using it as a plugin in Photoshop. And when you do that, there's a couple things I recommend you do before you send the image over to Photoshop. And by the way, we'll be working on this panorama uh, image here. One thing I recommend you do before you send an image over into photo or into Luminar Flex from Photoshop is that you duplicate the layer or at least merge, create a merged uh, layer above all your other layers. In this case, I only have the one background layer. So duplicate the layer by hitting Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. The second thing I recommend you do is to convert that layer into a smart object. With a smart object, you'll be able to go back into Luminar Flex and re-edit anything. So when you add a bunch of filters to an image in Luminar Flex and then you return back into Photoshop, if you decide that you want to readjust one of those filters, if you have a smart object, you'll be able to do that. If you don't have a smart object, you won't be able to do that. So we're going to convert layer one into a smart object by right clicking right on it and going down to convert to smart object. And it just takes a second to do that. Once it does, you'll notice that then the a little postage stamp icon has a little square in the middle and that indicates this is now a smart object. So we're good to go. Now, this original image uh, is, of course, a panorama, and I just did some camera raw processing to it. Nothing fancy you could see. So I'm ready to send it over into Luminar Flex. I'm going to go up to Filter, down to Skylum Software, into Luminar Flex. And when I do that, it will then bring that smart object layer into Luminar Flex. And I should add that uh, the difference between, and I mentioned this in the last video, the difference between Luminar Flex and Luminar 3 really is just the digital asset management part of Luminar 3. That's not included in Luminar Flex. Luminar Flex is just the process engine of Luminar 3. And another question I received is someone said that they read somewhere that Luminar Flex has better masking capability compared to Luminar 3. I don't know where they heard that, but that's not true. It has the same exact masking capability of Luminar 3. All the processing power of Luminar 3 and all the processing features of Luminar 3 are in Luminar Flex. The only thing Luminar Flex doesn't have are the digital asset management parts, you know, the library module, where you could sort your images and put them in collections and star rate them and all that stuff. That's not included in Luminar Flex. All right, now what is, as I mentioned, is the processing engine. And when you're opened up into Luminar Flex, along the bottom you have what they call looks, which are really presets. And it comes with a bunch of different ones. And right now I have the one that I happen to sell open. It's Morganti's preset pack. And you could just come in and, you know, pick a, pick a preset uh, if you'd like to. And one thing I like about the way Luminar does the looks, or if you want to call them presets, when you apply one like this one, warm in the sun, it has an amount slider on it so that if it goes on a little bit too heavy, you could just bring the amount slider down. 
So you could come in and pick different presets if you want to get in and out real quick. Here's one that I called warm landscape. Now that looks a little bit heavy, heavy handed. So you could take the amount slider down. So again, you could come through, pick a preset and get out as quickly as you can. But really the power is in those filters and there's 51 different filters to choose from. <clears throat> and I think that's what we'll be doing here. We're going to be processing this uh, from scratch. Now, one nice feature of Luminar Flex is it has a history panel. So if you go up here where the little clock is at the top and click there, you see that everything I've done to this image is listed. So I'll go back to the original image. So this is right at the beginning. And that is if nothing happened. We just brought the image into Luminar Flex. And it will give you a set of filters that it thinks might be working for your image and you could try them out so right away we have the accent ai filter and this is the one slider uh, filter that processes an image and you can see i think it did does a pretty good job below that we have the ai sky enhancer this will really darken the blue sky and add kind of a, a graduated filter effect to the sky so i'm going to do that just a little bit and we're going to bring golden hour this was kind of late in the day, so it actually was more towards a sunset. Um, although it really wasn't golden hour, but it was later in the day. Now there's no foliage in this image, none to speak of at least. So I want to get rid of this filter. There's a little X right there and I'll get rid of that. Saturation and vibrance. We could bring saturation up maybe a little. Structure. Structure is one that um, you got to be careful with. If you go too far, you're going to make it look really HDR-ish. If you go too far the other way, it's going to be really dreamy. So we could get a really dreamy look or a really HDR look. I don't think I'm going to use this filter, so I'm going to get rid of it by clicking the X. Then we have uh, Brilliance Warmth. This is similar to Saturation Vibrance. In this case, we could uh, change the overall warmth of our image. If I move this second slider to the right, we make it warmer. Left makes it cooler. I think I want to make it a little warmer, so I'll move that to the right. Now we have advanced contrast. This is where you could um, apply contrast to specific parts of the image, highlights, midtones, or shadows. And I want to add some uh, contrast to the shadows. Shadows look really kind of muddy here. So I'm going to bring the mount slider way up. So it added a lot of, um, I think, more variance to the shadows. Now, overall, Let's see where we stand. We'll go up here with this eyeball and I'll just click the left mouse button and hold it. And there's our before and there's our after and there's our before and there's our after. You also have this kind of uh, side view with this line if you prefer to do that. All right, now uh, I still don't think it's quite done yet. So let's see what we got. We'll go to the filter catalog if we click add filter and I mentioned that there's 51 filters to choose from and they're kind of organized in groups essential filters issue fixers creative professional and utilities so we could come through here and I think once we start using luminar products for a while we kind of get our favorite uh you know ones that we like ones that we think uh you know kind of fit our style and one of mine is details enhancer and you'll notice as I hover over these we get an explanation of what the filter does along with a sample image for that filter if you don't want to see that you could turn that off by clicking on this eye right here and then those won't appear I kind of like them and I mentioned that I prefer, I like to add detail enhancer to mine so I'll click on that and you can see that there's really just five sliders. So we have small details. And you can see as I move that up, it's kind of more affecting the smaller like ripples and the little details in the buildings uh, when I do the small details. And to reset a slider back to its default position, just double click on the word of that slider, the name of the slider. Uh, median, medium, I'm sorry. Uh, those are more medium details, and I think that one serves this image well. Uh, below that is large, and those are large details. And I think the medium one, I'm going to move that up a touch. Next, I want to add a vignette, and the vignette is right here. We'll click on that, and then you could close the filters catalog down 
uh, right here with that little X and give you a little more room. So with the vignette, um, if you go to the right with the mount, you'll add a white vignette. If you go to the left, you'll add a dark or black vignette. And I prefer the darker vignette. And you could move the size. And you could just experiment with the roundness and see what fits your image. And I want to brighten up the middle, so I'm going to go with the inner light and move that to the right. So it kind of brightens up the middle and gets everyone to look more towards the middle of the image. Let's see where we stand. There's a before and after. Before, after. And I really like uh, what we've done here. Now there is an overall filters amount slider that will always be underneath all the different filters. And if you, you know, look at it and go, well, it's a little bit heavy handed, you could pull that down and it will just kind of fade it out a little bit. But I kind of like what we did here. So I would say that this is done. And we're going to click Apply. So now it will apply these adjustments to that smart object. And once we're open back up into Photoshop, I'll demonstrate the advantage of a smart object. I'd like you to just note, uh, for reference, look at Detail Enhancer. We have Medium at 25. Everything else is at zero except masking is at 50. So remember that because, as I mentioned, when you have a smart object and you send the image over into Luminar Flex from the smart object, you'll be able to go back in and re-edit things right where you left off. So now it's applying it to this layer. And you can see there it is. And you can see as the layer is, because it's a smart object, you can see there's Luminar Flex. We applied this filter to this layer. And there's the layer before and after. Before, after. Now, we want to go back in and readjust anything. Just double click right where it says Luminar Flex. It will reopen that smart object in Luminar Flex. And because it is a smart object, it's going to remember all the filters we've applied and all the filters that uh, all the adjustments of those filters, I'm sorry. So if we look then at Detail Enhancer, you'll see Medium is at 25. The other three sliders are at zero and Masking is at 50. So it remembered right where we left off. So really a great advantage. Now we could come back in and readjust things if we'd like to. We could add a new filter. Um, whatever we think this uh, image needs, we could do it. So if you're like me, you probably would need this type of um, functionality where you could go back in and re-edit things. Because quite often when I edit something, a day or two later I'll look at it and think, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. And uh, with the smart object, we're able to come back in and re-edit those things. So I think that is a tremendous advantage. In our next video, I'm going to demonstrate masking and the advantages of the filters masks and the layers mask that are available with Luminar Flex. So again, we're open back up in Photoshop. There's before and there's after. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.